coming up. Is the CEO of CMHC receiving a bonus this year? Minister, who is Andre Lee's Mathot? Um, I don't know them personally. Um, Ms. Mathot uh, was announced to be a member of the Canada Infrastructure Bank, appointed uh, by the Trudeau government. She came from the Sustainable Development Technology Canada, which is also known as the Billion Dollar Green Slush Fund. And uh, part of the reason it's known as that is because of um, some of the work of Ms. Mathot including her financial interest in a group of companies that she voted to give 42 million taxpayer dollars to. Do you endorse her serving on the infrastructure bank? This guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Yes, thank you, Minister, for appearing today. I just want to turn um, to some of the uh, issues that you mentioned under housing. Now, in the City of Toronto, uh, since the Liberals signed their Housing Accelerator Fund Agreement, and that was in December 2023, housing starts are down by 21%. And housing starts in Toronto in Q1 period of 2023 were 6,568. And in Q1 2024, they were 5,188. And you testified at HUMA, uh, you confirm that freezing or lowering development charges was not a precondition of any housing accelerator agreements. Can you confirm that freezing or lowering development charges was not a condition in Toronto's uh, $471 million HAF agreement? Uh, so first uh, through you, uh, Mr. Chair, on the issue of housing starts in the first quarter nationally, we saw an increase of uh, 16%. We are seeing some downward pressure as a result of higher interest rates being uh, priced into the system uh, when people are looking to start or, or not start a project, which is why we continue to put more measures on the table, such as uh, tax cuts, uh, changes to municipal zoning and, and other measures to help speed up the pace of construction. With respect to the issue of development cost charges, we've decided to do that through the Canada Housing Infrastructure fund. I'll note uh, one point of contrast between our plans is the conservative plan that was put forward includes no measures uh, to address the issue of development cost charges. They're very real uh, in terms of their impact on housing affordability and production, uh, Mr. Uh, but we've chosen to Minister, do that through a different way. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I, I'd like to move on to ask you about um, specific development charges since you raised that. Now, from 20, 20, 2013 to 2020. Three development charges increased in Toronto by 370%. On May 1st, 2024, five months after signing the HAF agreement, Toronto raised development charges by an additional 20.7%. Twenty when you were here last time in committee, um, you, you did touch on this, but I want you to commit today, um, Minister, that you will rectify this and that those charges to homeowners will be reimbursed to them in some capacity. S sorry, wh the, which charges? You're talking about a reimbursement. There's no money that's come to the federal government to be reimbursed. Could I just get clarity, Mr. Chair, on, on what, what monies are, uh, the federal government's received that you're seeking to have reimbursed? The HAF agreement is specifically what I'm speaking about, Minister. You're uh, familiar with that, correct? Yes, but but just a point of clarity, the the question asks for a reimbursement. You're talking about the housing accelerator fund, but you asked for the reimbursement to be paid to residents. I'm just I'm trying to figure out which money residents would have uh, paid that you're now asking to be reimbursed. Just well, we just know that taxes on development charges are a significant impediment to getting more houses built. Correct? Is that not correct? Yes, I agree. And it is a primary reason why projects are no longer. Um, penciled out, correct? Uh, I wouldn't say it's a primary. It's, it's one of several important factors. Well, you have given $4.4 billion without addressing this, and no homes have been built. Isn't that correct, Minister? Uh, no, that's not correct. Uh, neither the $4.4 billion figure or the fact that no homes have been built. Both of those are incorrect. Well, Minister, isn't it... Uh, isn't it how much more time do I have? You have two minutes, Dr. Lewis. Two minutes. Minister, isn't it a fact that... <laughs> The major impediment right now in building homes are these development charges, and we have seen these costs increase, especially in the city of Toronto, by 370%. And 
you have no, not made a commitment to do anything to lower these costs for these residents. Uh, that, Will you commit to that today? Uh, that, that's also false. In fact, this was a key feature of the recent Canada Housing and Infrastructure Fund. I find it curious as well that the Conservative plan, which has been published and has draft legislation that's sitting, waiting to be brought forward, has no measures that address the issue of development cost charges. We're literally the only party who's actually put forward a plan that includes specific measures to address them. So... Uh, and again, if you're going to look for someone who's actually authorized the use of development cost charges, they're authorized for municipalities used by provincial legislation. So if you want to raise the issue with someone who has not been clear on their position, you can talk to your party leader or perhaps you could uh, write to the provincial conservative government in Ontario. Uh, but when it comes to development cost charges, we have put forward a plan that will limit increases to the Canada Housing and Infrastructure Fund compared to your own party who, despite your questions today, has yet to put forward any plan to address these issues. Well, Minister, that, that's not what the residents of Toronto are feeling. Uh, let me just ask about the CMHC um, situation here. Now, Minister, how many CEO, how many um, C CMHC staff have received bonuses? And did the CEO of CM CMHC receive a bonus this year? I don't know the answer to how many staff members would have received uh, bonuses. I don't know uh, if our deputy minister has that information. I, I, I do not. That would be um, through the board of directors of CMHC. Uh, well, there's been 27 million in bonuses in 2023 that was paid by tax that that were paid by taxpayers, and these same taxpayers can't afford to buy these homes yet. They are paying executives and staff at CMHC for bonuses for homes that have, th there's been no increase in the homes built in 2023. Isn't that correct, mi Minister? Sorry, I've got the microphone. Uh, look, my, my view when it comes to uh, compensation for those who work for Crown Corporations of the Public Service is it should be uh, independent of the uh, elected levels. I think that's a, a recipe for uh, your disaster. Minister, uh, the, thank you, oh, Dr. We're, we're Lewis. Being, uh, we're unfortunately out of time the there. And Lewis, the floor is yours once again. You have five minutes, please. Yes, so Minister, I want to ask you something specific that falls under your portfolio. As the Minister responsible for housing and who is accountable to the National Housing Agency, is the CEO of CMHC receiving a bonus this year? Uh, I don't uh, typically involve myself with the compensation of uh, employees of Crown Corps. I don't know what the status of a bonus. I would point out there's an interim CEO right now and it may be a unique structure. Do you not see the budget? It's, uh, sorry, I could uh, uh, just as easily yield, although my deputies just uh, shared with me that it's a governor and council uh, process and that the bonus hasn't actually been determined. Hasn't been determined, okay. And do you think that it's fair that the, um, that the CEO of, uh, of CMHC receives a bonus in a year where housing starts or down? I think it's important that uh, elected officials don't uh, try to interfere with the compensation scheme set for public servants. I think it would be a bad practice. Uh, so from my perspective, if there is a process uh, that people were uh, following, that process ought to be followed. So performance could be dismal and your government would still, pay, would, would still think it's okay for public servants or um, CEOs of, of cor um, Crown Corporations or um, agencies to receive bonuses, even though performance is abysmal? Well, the performance uh, uh, standards reflected in a given bonus structure should, should reward performance. Uh, now there's uh, housing conditions that are challenging that may be inside or outside of a person's control. Uh, but uh, again, uh, once you have a, a process designed to reward performance, uh, that process should be, uh, should be abided by. And when performance is down, there should be bonuses. Is that what you're, is that what you're saying? Yeah, those are your words, not mine. Okay. okay um, well, can we go back to one of your previous answers, ministers? You stated that um, the $4 billion housing accelerator fund that I referred to was incorrect, but that's actually on page 45 of the budget. Uh, Are you going to correct that you, response? You had Mr. said uh, four point four billion. Uh, four billion was administered previously. Not all of that money has actually been spent because most cases involve a municipality that only gets a twenty-five percent 
upfront payment uh, so we can protect against the risk uh, that a community wouldn't follow through on the performance that they've uh, agreed to in, in the uh, particular agreement. So, How many in, houses has been built as a result of that $4 billion that you reference? Well, the specific funding uh, leads to systemic changes that will have uh, an impact over time. The communities that we've partnered with have indicated that over the next decade, they expect an increase in building permits issued of 750,000 across Canada. Okay. And so you see, we've seen property taxes, we've seen um, costs increase for homeowners in places like Toronto, while the federal government is dishing out $4 billion in a housing accelerator fund. Will you commit today in not giving out any housing accelerator money to cities that increase development charges or other taxes on home buyers? Uh, when we deal with... Uh the development cost charges, we use the Canada Housing Infrastructure Fund that was in the recent federal budget, not the Housing yeah, Accelerator Fund, Minister. Uh, that we're uh, only funding infrastructure uh, differently, but the Housing Accelerator Fund agreement was designed not around development cost charges, so around no permits today. and uh, zoning practices. I'm going to move on with my question. Um, your government has set some pretty ambitious targets to build the homes, to build homes in uh, for Canadians. Your government's goal is 3.9 million homes in 2031. That's 1.096 homes must be built every minute. That's 65 homes per hour. We've been here just over 30 minutes. Has your government built 32 homes in the last 32 minutes, Minister? My view is that people who would suggest a problem is impossible to solve uh, shouldn't try to interfere with the person who's trying to actually solve it. If your goal is to throw up obstacles every way, uh, feel free. Have a field day. Uh, I want to solve the housing crisis. My goal My is actually based around what I think it will take to solve it. Point of order, Mr. As I Chair. Expect, Mr. Chair. Point of, er point of order. I have a point of order. We're going to stop the time. Yes, Ms. Katrakis. I just think that all of us around this table should be very respectful when we address each other, especially when we have a minister here who's very forthcoming and very honest and transparent and is trying his very best to answer us in a very respectful manner. Mr. Chair, I think that we should tone it down and we should allow the person that is answering the question to answer before we interrupt. May I respond, Mr. Chair? Thank you, Ms. Katrakis. I don't point of order, Mr. Chair? No, I have another point of order from Mr. Yakino. Mr. Yakino? I'd like to also add to what my colleague uh, has just made as a comment. It's also for the uh, translation. When we have two people speaking at the same time, it becomes very hard for the translation. So I think it would be important to allow uh, the questions to be asked, the time for them to be asked, and also the time for them to be responded so that uh, translation can be done properly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Yakino. I'm just going to go over to Mr. Strahl, uh, Dr. Lewis. Mr. Strahl, you have a point of order, sir? Yeah, yeah. on the same point of order, Mr. Chair, um, ministers are given the same amount of time to respond to the very limited amount of time that we have for questioning. And we certainly don't need Liberal MPs policing our tone when we're questioning a minister who is accountable and responsible uh, for their portfolio to Parliament. Thank you, Mr. Strahl. I will say, colleagues, just a quick reminder, uh, translation is extremely important. Um, I do want to remind everyone that we do need to give time for our translators to hear the question and the response. I know that we're all trying to get in as many questions as we can to the minister who is here with us today. It occurs every single time. So I just ask that we give opportunity for the minister to hear the question, to respond, uh, and then start with a second question. And with that, Dr. Lewis, I'll turn the floor back over to you and I'll add 15 seconds to your time. You have 45 seconds left. I, I, I'd like to comment on the point of order. So are you, are you not going, you're going to take I'll, that out of my time? Uh, no, I'll let you comment, but please do keep it minimal just because everybody right. still has the questions they would like to ask. Okay, thank you. So I, I just want to say I respect my colleagues' comments. Um, however, there's nothing impolite about holding a government to account. Mm -hmm. That is my job as opposition, and uh, we have very limited time, and I will definitely try to be respectful of the translators because they do need to do their job, and, and I appreciate the, the, the comments. Dr. Um, Lewis, I'll start your clock now at 45 seconds. So, Mr. Minister, how many homes have you built, has your government built in the last 30 minutes? 
Uh, it's important to recognize that the government isn't the entity that is constructing the homes. We are putting incentives on the table f to create the rule uh, changes to the rules that make it easier to build a home. We have funding on the table, uh, but it's actually uh, the private sector and nonprofits who build the homes, not not the government. How many projects has the Infrastructure Bank completed in the last seven years? Uh, do you have the f 56? Completed? Com uh, those would be the would, would have an agreement where the the funding role I, again the bank itself doesn't complete the projects they would finance the projects so that would be how many they finance so you 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 consider giving out money as a as completed and as a benefit and as a a result and outcome uh, th again your words not mine that's how many they would have financed the Thank projects you. would be at various stages of completion. Thank Very you very much, Minister, and thanks to you, Dr. Lewis. Minister, who is Andre Lee's Mathot? Um, I don't know them personally. I understand they've held a few uh, board positions uh, within different uh, federal organizations. Okay, and so Miss um, Mathot uh, was announced to be a member of the Canada Infrastructure Bank, appointed uh, by the Trudeau government. She came from the Sustainable Development Technology. Canada, which is also known as the Billion Dollar Green Slush Fund, and uh, part of the reason it's known as that is because of um, some of the work of Ms. Mathot, including her financial interest in a group of companies that she voted to give 42 million taxpayer dollars to. Do you endorse her serving on the Infrastructure Bank? Uh, I actually uh, understand that person has resigned, so uh, there's, there is no such service to endorse. And on what date did Ms. Mathot resign? Uh, the 16th of April. So we have this, what is pretty plain to see or what would be perceived to be as, as corruption. We have people serving uh, on boards uh, appointed by the government. They uh, are rewarded <laughs> after it's revealed that um, there's been these kinds of insider dealings. Multiple other people on, on the board um, who were uh, GIC appointments um, being under investigation by the Ethics Commissioner and then being appointed to the Infrastructure Bank, a larger pool of money with which they could advantage their own, uh, pri further their own private interests and advantage themselves. So uh, this individual offered their resignation. Um, was that the, you know, following an announcement of an investigation by yourself the, into, um, into their dealings while serving on the Infrastructure Bank? Uh, no, I've, I've made no such announcement uh, to that kind of an investigation. I would just uh, caution, I don't know this person. Uh, I, I do know that there was some uh, reasons uh, to look into the work uh, at SDTC. Uh, while inquiries uh, are ongoing to uh, make allegations of corruption just in a general way, I, I think uh, sets a dangerous precedent, and I would uh, uh, urge caution on all members uh, in advance of any explicit findings because of the impact that those kinds of statements can have uh, on a person permanently throughout the yeah, course of their life. Sure. I, I appreciate your caution, Minister, but it's a matter of public record, you know, Ms. Mathot's uh, personal interests and then the decisions that she took uh, while serving on the SDTC board and then went on to receive um, what is a, you know, know, a, pres a, a prestigious... Uh, Mr. Baird, just one second, please. I'll stop your time. I have a point of order for Mr. Biddle. Mr. Biddle. I guess I'm just curious who um, Mr. Baird is subbing in for. All the regular members of the Conservative Party are here, and if they're here, they're um, uh, participating. So I was just wondering who um, Mr. Baird is, is subbing in for. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to respond to Mr. Biddle. He can be present, even if other members are here. We can be present. Can he be participating? But he can't be voting. Okay, but okay. So I'm I'm an associate member of the committee, Mr. Yes. Chair, and and I'm able to uh, participate as a, that, yeah. a as a member of the official opposition. And um, if my colleagues are generous in sharing their uh, opportunity to question the minister with me, I'm I'm able to do that, provided I abide by the rules of the committee and don't cast a vote um, when regular members uh, or or permanent members of the committee are present. That is correct. Okay. I'll turn the floor back over to you, and I'll start your time. You have two and a half minutes left, sir. Point of order, Mr. Chair. I'll go to Ms. Katrakis. Yeah, I'm just uh, questioning the relevance of this line of questioning because we are here on Maine's uh, estimates. So I'd just like to find out what the relevance is. Thank you, Ms. Katrakis. Um, I'll ask all members to try and find a way to segue or explain uh, the line of questioning as it relates to the Maine estimates. And with that, I'll turn the floor back over to you, Mr. Barrett. 
Okay, look, it's uh, it's beyond rich. I've got one member uh, of the government who uh, who doesn't want me to even be able to ask questions, though it's, of course, established that I'm able to do so. We have another member um, saying that my questions aren't relevant when we're asking the minister responsible for infrastructure about appointments to the infrastructure board. It screams cover-up when we're talking about questions of corruption that have been well reported on uh, in the media and are rightly concerning uh, for Canadians who have uh, who have a hard Hard time paying their bills, and we have insiders who are lining their pockets while they have plum government appointments and access to make decisions uh, that that personally benefit uh, themselves. Minister, would you be able to uh, table for the committee following your appearance um, the the resignation letter or official notice from your uh, from the infrastructure bank um, that that resignation uh, did in fact take place on the date that you uh, indicated? So I, I don't have a copy. I'd be happy to undertake to request uh, that the Canada Infrastructure Bank provide that to me. That's that's excellent. The the concern and the reason that I that I raised this, of course, Dr. Lewis um, uh, very uh, ably put questions to you about the completion of projects by the Infrastructure Bank. And so we have questions about the efficacy and and the competence um, of the organization. With respect to any future appointments, um, we'd of course expect that uh, those appointments are given to people who have not been implicated in uh, in, in questions of uh, self-dealing. But will you commit today to undertake a review of decisions that Ms. Mathot participated in while serving on uh, the Infrastructure Bank so as to be able to assure Canadians that no further insider dealing was undertaken by Ms. Mathot? So I, I'm uh, ha happy to look into it. Some of the elements might be properly administered by uh, the bank in the first instance, uh, as an uh, uh, entity that operates independent of government, but I've got no reservations to looking into it. I think we all owe it to our constituents to make sure that there's not uh, inappropriate use of uh, taxpayers' money, even, even when it's run by an arm's-length organization and the money's paid back.